Hi there, Andrew Jackson, AJ Design Studio. Here's a uh, another SolidWorks tutorial. Uh, this one is in SolidWorks 2017, and what I'm going to do is model a uh, like a smooth pad ball form um, that you might see in various electronic sort of consumer electronic devices. Um, SolidWorks with splines. You can make up to a G2 connection, so curvature continuous. But uh, I'm looking at ways that you might be able to create like almost a fake G3 connection. Um, so there is no tool to actually uh, specify G3 at the moment in SolidWorks, especially in 2017. But um, by looking at curvature graphs, I can um, approximate a G3 connection. So anyway, let's have a look at this. So here's a pebble form that I've modelled earlier. So it has a main surface in the middle with a boundary around the outside and then I've mirrored it around. So I've modelled a top quarter and then mirrored it several times to make a symmetric form. So if I put zebra stripes on, you can see, I'll just show you a zebra stripes. I've stopped using the built-in zebra stripes in SolidWorks because the, the boundary on the zebra is blurry, uh, which isn't much use um, as far as communicating what's going on. So if you actually go from file, I've gone to uh, Photoshop and just create a high-res file with some stripes in it, and you have a much less blur on the edge, and it's much more useful. So as you can see here, the form's pretty smooth, uh, the transition from there's the main surface in the middle, which is slightly flatter, and then transitions into the um, the curved outside edge, as you can see. There you can see the surface boundaries. So you can see that main surface in the middle there. So I'll just roll back the file. To create the main surface, it's just a simple um, sweep. So I have a couple of arcs. I've swept one arc along another arc to create my starting surface. And so that's just an arc and it's just got a dimension setting how the height at the end of the arc difference from the from the start. And then I've created a, another sketch which is just a boundary uh, using a style spline. So this is a degree 3 Bezier curve. As you can see here, degree 3. It's um, t a tangent I guess if you mirror it across, or normal to the centre lines, so it just has a vertical and a horizontal constraint on those to make sure it's tangent across the centre line. Okay, and now I have another um, spline on the top plane, which is going to trim back my starter surface there. So I have a trim here, surface trim, there we go, so that's that's our main surface in the middle. That could be a screen boundary or something like that. Uh, this was a handheld item. Okay, and there's our outside boundary. Okay, zebra, as you can see, that's fairly smooth. Okay, so down this end, I have a sketch already set up. I'm just going to show you using um, using a style spline so just leave it on busy here okay if I'm going to create a, a style spline um, if you want a curvature connection on one end you need three points so there's the rules the rules for um, one, two, three. 
I'm going to pause my video at this point. It's getting a little bit fast. Okay, so with a curvature continuous connection, with a spline, you need to have three points uh, that align with the other geometry. So on one end here, I have three points, and on the other end, I have one point before the end point. And that. So on the left-hand end, I have one point, because that's up. That's all I need to make it. I need two the two points lined up to make a, a tangent connection. On the other end, I need three points for a curvature connection. Okay, so if I make there we go tangent and curvature, and on this end, I'm just going to make that vertical because that's going to be as perpendicular or normal to the uh, the plane I'm going to mirror it about. As you can see, if you drag points around once you put a curvature constraint on there, curvature continuous constraint, it's a bit of a handful and everything moves around. So I prefer to dimension, and that way things aren't going to walk around. Okay. So I'm going to select this curve here, convert entities, so I can show the curvature We'll move it off the screen, sorry. Show curvature combs, okay, and then turn on curvature combs for the um, spline. Okay, so you can see that is a curvature continuous connection because where the two combs meet each other, the comb points meet, the curves meet at a point. See how it comes down there? And there's an angle. But because there's, there's not a smooth connection there, that means this is curvature continuous G2 connection. Now what I want to do is be able to specify a smooth connection through there. So the combs are tangent. Problem is SolidWorks doesn't allow you to do that. There's no tool built in to do that. But I have found a way of approximating that. It's, it's straightforward to do if that top surface was planar because then you can just line up control points uh, co-linear to each other, but uh, it's not so straightforward when you're trying to match it to an arc. Okay, so here's a curve I've created earlier. You can see the, the plot there with the curvature combs, they come in together as, as a tangent, or virtually tangent. But I've got no way to check if they are tangent, so I can't actually interrogate the connection in SOLIDWORKS to see if it is G3. All I can do is scale it up and down here with the curvature combs and have a look and just see. It looks smooth. I mean, you know, it's better than the G2 connection. So to create that um, sketch, I'll recreate one. On the right plane, we want to create a style spline. And for a G3 connection, we need four points to line up and one point on the other end for the tangent, two points, sorry. So four points need to line up. So I'm going to add the tendency, I'm going to add the curvature continuous. On this end, I'm just going to make it vertical, which is normal to the mirror plane. hope that makes sense. Okay, I'm going to dimension these, like I did in the sketch before, but now I've got an extra point, as you can see. Okay, there's our extra point. So I'm going to convert entities here so we can show the um, curvature combs. Okay, so you can see the curvature combs aren't tangent at the moment. We grab this point here and sh move it around, you can see what happens, see what effect it has. It's because the, well, SOLIDWORKS can be a little bit sensitive to being um, overdefined. Okay, so here's my helper. This is an arc, and I'm going to make that arc coincident to the two points that are already fixed in space by the tangent and curvature continuous constraint. Uh, okay, this is going to get fussy. Um, SOLIDWORKS doesn't like. We'll just make this um, construction. So our arc is not tangent to anything. It's only constrained by the points on the spline. 
the first three points, the end point and the first two points on the, from the end point. Okay, so I've just deleted those other constraints so we don't have everything yellow. I'll reinstate them later. Okay, now I'm going to dimension our G3 point there, which is the fourth point from that end. Okay, and you can see there, things look fairly smooth through there. I, as I said before, I can't interrogate it to make sure the curvature cone's a, a, a tangent. Um, the five to five, fifth degree Bezier curve, because it has six points, one, two, three, four, five, so it's got two end points and then four in the middle. Okay, so we'll reinstate this end. Okay, coincident. And then we're going to make this vertical. Yep, which means when we mirror things, it will be curvature continuous to itself when it's mirrored, because we have all the points lined up. Okay. So that helper arc I put in um, holds that point onto something that basically means all I have to do is shift that nine, that dimension of nine around, and it seems to keep the curvature cones uh, tangent or pair tangent to each other. Okay. So I'm going to use the curves that I created earlier. They're the same, but they've got slightly different dimensions, um, just so I don't have to redefine my boundary surface down further. As you can see, it's, it's set up in a similar way. Okay, and now I created another with the helper arc, as you can see, down that end. On the front plane. Okay, one, two, three, and the end point. So you need three points in the end point to make a G3 connection. Okay, and the boundary, which I created earlier, just extruded that. Just an arbitrary distance. I've created two points because I'm going to create a cross curve. And I just created two points because I'd like to control the angle. So it's, it sits fairly normal to the um, to the extruded surface. Okay. And that that plane is just those two points and it is if I edit this, you can look down, it's it's perpendicular to the top plane. Okay, so on the sketch, it's set up the same way as the others, except to start with, I've had to set up constru construction geometry off our main surface, intersection surface, and intersection surface with the extrude. Probably don't need to do it with the extrude, but I did it in case the extrude has an angle on it, if you put draft or anything. Okay, intersection curve. So again, it's um, Bezier curve, degree 5. Uh, because on one end we've got two, three, four points, and on the other end we've got two. So it's only tangent to the midplane. Okay, now I've created a boundary surface. <coughs> Excuse me. So the boundary surface has got the, the main surface and the extrusion surface with tangent constraints. I haven't used uh, curvature continuous to the main surface in the middle because, to be honest, it uh, all it does is causes a wrinkle because um, SolidWorks tries to over-define things. But because the input curves are G2 or higher uh, to that surface, it just seems to make the surface G2 or higher as well. Um, don't ask me how it works because SolidWorks doesn't expose users to low-level uh, information like that. Or control. Okay, so there's our surface. So I've made the end the end sections of the surface normal to the uh, mid plane, the right hand plane, and the front plane. So we're not mirror it later. So you can see there, it's a fairly smooth connection to the to the top. There will be some change because obviously the top's flatter, and then things curve. Um, but again, you might want that in your design. Um, if, might want all the curve curvature change happening on the edges. So it looks pretty good. Um, I'm fairly happy with that. You can see how it flows. Alright, so I have some mirrors here already set up. 
So I'll just mirror it several times to create a solid object. So we'll knit it together and then thicken to create a solid. Okay, so there we go. Because our um the surface was normal to the right plane on the top plane and the front plane, when we mirrored it, there was an automatic G2 connection. So that's why I didn't specify curvature continuous across the mirror planes. Because it would have overdefined it. And it would have, we already ended up with a flat area. So let's have a look. We can just change my main boundary. Rebuild. See what happens. Might have to adjust the cross curve a bit because we'll be getting longer so the curvature will change. Um, but you could apply this to sort of a more rectangular object, you know, iPhone kind of thing. Everybody knows what I mean. Um, yeah. Again, SolidWorks, you know, um, it doesn't offer you users low level access to surfacing. Uh, like, I don't know how many points, um, what degree surface, etc. This is made out of. Um, just showing you there across the mirror lines, it's fairly smooth. Uh, you know, there's no wrinkles or hogbacks, as someone says. Um, yep. So another tutorial from AJ Design Studio, Andrew Jackson. Hope you enjoyed it. And good luck. Bye.